Maybe you in school, maybe you in college, or maybe you in university. Maybe you even doing an online course, but for some reason you can't seem to cross the finish line. You can't get yourself to pass. Something hasn't gone your way. You found yourself in a very tight position. You found yourself becoming anxious and you found yourself actually looking down a very dark tunnel. But it's not a reason for you to give up. It's not a reason for you to stop what it is that you're doing because there is benefits to actually learning. So today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that you can actually use in your daily life and you can apply it to your studies. And let's see where it takes you and maybe we can get you past. So let's get into it. Do you remember when you were younger and you did something with either paint or coloring pencils or whatever it is? And you went to your parents and you said, Mom, Dad, look at what I made. And they say, wow, that's so amazing. You know, you've done so well um, because you've done your best. And so you grow up believing this thing that if you do your best, that things will sort of work out for you. But it actually doesn't. Often, many times, you actually have to put in more than your best. You have to go either 110%, 120%. Sometimes you just need to put in 200%. This is a very difficult concept to understand, especially if you are coming from a rural area outside of the city where the quality of the education was not that great. And maybe you are coming from an area where you have language barriers and that kind of thing. It's also very difficult to understand, especially difficult to understand if you are going to do a course like architecture or you know arts or anything like that. Anything that has a very deep theoretical component and a, a very tight creativity component that plugs into it. It can become extremely challenging, especially if you're coming from a school that doesn't have that background. Let's say, for instance, you studied business in school and you're sort of going to study architecture. I generally find in my business that these are the students that generally end up struggling the most. So before we start, I want you to ask yourself three questions. Number one, how good is your best really? Have you ever thought about that? If I give my best, how good is that? Not from your perspective. Don't think about when you were younger and what your parents were saying. Think about the perspective from your teacher or your lecturer. How good is your best really? Number two. So if you look at either the college or the university or whatever institution that you are attending, if you look at their standards, measure your best against their standards and then ask yourself the question, is your best really good enough? And then number three, what is it that I can do to get my best to be good enough? You see, I got a very different perspective about this whole thing. So I don't actually want you to do your best. So the question is, how can I get the results that I want without doing my best? So do you remember when we spoke earlier and we mentioned you taking your picture to your parents or whatever it is and and they said to you, wow, you're, my son, you did your best. Um, you've actually started believing through that whole process that your best is good enough. You see, that in fact is actually not true because the thing is, your best cannot be good enough. If you take an Olympic swimmer, for instance, there is certain times where they have to push themselves to the limit, to a point where they never thought they would ever achieve. They have to go past and beyond their best to actually achieve the goal. You see, the truth is you actually don't need to do your best. Yes, I know it sounds a bit crazy, but you don't need to do your best. You just need to take a different approach. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So, in my experience, what I've actually found is that there are students out there, they study a course or they go to college or whatever, they do the bare minimum and they get the results that they want. So, what is it that they are doing different that you are not doing? So, I actually want to read a quote to you and the quote is by Brian Herbert and he says, The capacity to learn is a gift 
The ability to learn is a skill and the willingness to learn is a choice. You see, there's a specific step that is missing in your whole approach to your learning. And often I find that students, they work in isolation. And because they work in isolation, they use their own knowledge. And when you are using your own knowledge, you are not actually learning because what you should actually be doing is taking the information that you were taught in class or through your lessons and actually applying that information and not using your own knowledge or your own understanding. You see, the thing is, when you go to an institution, it doesn't matter what it is, they are going to test you. And if they do test you, either it's through a quiz or it's through a test or it's through some kind of exam or whatever, they are trying to test to see if you have learned the knowledge that they have taught you. And if you have applied your own knowledge or if you applied your own thinking, you will fail that task simply because you have not learned anything. So let's take quickly a simple example. Let's say, for instance, you go to a baking class, for instance, and you want to learn how to bake a cake. So you go through the whole process of what it is. So you are working in isolation. You don't interact with the people in your class. You don't interact with the students who are doing really well. You are not asking the necessary questions. You are not engaging and you are not getting involved. So you're working in isolation and you're sort of applying your own knowledge to bake that cake. So then you actually bake the cake during your test or whatever. You bring it to your lecturer and he's actually not happy with your performance and you get a failed mark as a result of that. Um, it's simply because you've worked in isolation and you've applied your own knowledge. You see, the thing is, if you are actually going to do the course, then you got to take in the information that they teach you. You see, the thing is, the worst thing that you can actually tell yourself is that I know. You know, I've had so many students uh, throughout the years and the worst students, the ones that perform the worst, are the ones who think that they know. They work in isolation. They don't actually engage with the other students. They think that they know and that they can do this. Those students generally end up failing. You see, the thing is, it doesn't actually matter whether that cake was done through your own best. If it was done to the best of your ability or you gave it your all. And so you end up feeling crushed or you end up feeling demotivated because you've tried your best or you've done your best, but you didn't get the results that you want. It's simply because you didn't apply the knowledge that you were supposed to learn. So let's create a scenario that you've actually done things slightly different. You've applied that additional step, which is actually learning. Let's have a look and see how that sort of plays out. So you go into a course, a baking course, and you want to learn how to bake a cake. You are going to apply some of the knowledge that you have gained while you were practicing at home doing cakes or whatever. You're literally going to eat the meat and throw the bones. You also have to unschool yourself from the stuff that you've learned. Let's say you mixed something wrong or this ingredient can't go with that ingredient. That's when you actually have to apply the knowledge that you learn in class. And so what's going to happen is you are going to use that information. You're going to apply it to your actual cake. And what's going to happen is you're going to see your results start to improve. Now, let's say, for instance, you, you bake a cake and you get tested. And let's say, for instance, you've just scraped through. Maybe the pass mark is 50% and you get 50% on the dot. That is a good start. It's better than you actually failing the cake. So then what you're going to do after that is you're going to go back to your lecturer, back to your teacher or back to whoever is, is, is running the course and you will say to them, listen, I've come this far. Um, is there anything else that I can do to improve my recipe, that I can improve my technique? And, you know, I do think maybe my cake is slightly too dry or is there areas that I can improve in? And through that whole process, your marks will start to increase and you'll find yourself doing much better than where you were before. But remember, your time is actually against you. You only have a specific time period. Let's say the course is six months or a year or two years. You only have a specific amount of time. If you don't change your learning methods very soon, you might end up in trouble. So in actual fact, if you look at it, the problem is actually got nothing to do with your best. How much you're trying or, or, or anything like that. It's got to do with the fact that you are actually not learning 
or you are actually not willing to learn or you're actually not willing to engage and improve yourself and that is what the results is actually showing that you have not learned it's not necessarily saying that you are not good enough it's just saying that you have not learned what we have tried to teach you so what i would suggest to you is instead of actually working in isolation get involved with your peers get involved with the guys in clubs get involved with the guys who are doing extremely well learn how they are doing things find out from them if they can help you with certain things go back to your lecturer ask him or her what is it that i'm doing wrong if he's experienced or she's an experienced lecturer she'll be able to give you tips and tricks of specifically what you need to know in order to improve your marks and you also need to look at other resources as well go and spend time in a library go and spend time online have a look at videos that can actually benefit you instead of watching garbage that's not actually going to help you sit maybe take an hour two hours out of the day have a look and see whether you can find something in the library or whether you can find something online that's going to help you improve your marks you see the thing is there's also a lot of habits that students actually take from school and so when they start to engage in higher education those habits they sort of follow them poor time management um, not willing to read that kind of thing so if you want to gear up and push your marks up you have to gear up your level get out of this understanding of using your own knowledge and also stop working in isolation you see a test any form of test is just basically a way to measure your learning so if for instance you've scored under the pass mark or let's say for instance you've done really bad it's a clear reflection that you haven't learned through the process you haven't applied the knowledge that they were trying to teach you and that's why you are failing you see the thing is if you actually just take a different approach and stop working in isolation start engaging in more material engaging with your lecture engaging with your peers getting involved in the learning material spending a little bit more time with your studies and so on you're going to find that your marks will start to improve at a rapid rate and it will start to improve not because you are doing your best or you are working hard your marks will start to improve why because you are working smart you are working in a way that the university the college the online course or whatever they want you to work they want you to apply the knowledge that they are teaching you so at the end of the day you actually don't need to do your best you only need to do what you have learned it's as simple as that i would like to give you two tips these two tips actually helped me a lot while i was studying and the first one is you got to make learning a habit you got to get into the habit of learning especially if you're doing a long course maybe it's 5 years maybe it's 7 years depending you got to get into the motion of actually learning whatever the given subject go and spend time in the library go and spend time online reading through articles reading through blogs reading through books also having a look at different videos and strategies of how things are actually done and if you create that habit of learning you find yourself becoming extremely hungry and that you're going to find things that you eventually didn't find interesting you're going to find them to be very interesting also what you need to do is you need to go back and forth with your lecturer identifying the areas that you need to improve what is it that i can do to improve and how can i go about doing that i know it's quite easy in a small class setting for larger groups it's a little bit more difficult but in areas where the groups are fairly large either get yourself a mentor maybe you in first year you get somebody maybe that's doing third year or fourth year to mentor you through the process learn first and then do don't do first and then learn tip number 2 so university college these fall under higher education and because it falls under higher education you're going to find a lot of the times when you actually go to these institutions that is very fast paced you got an assignment here you got a test here you want to hand in this you got to hand in that um you got to go to this lesson you got to wake up 5 o'clock in the morning to study so it's a very fast paced environment the reason for that is because there's a lot of knowledge that they need to teach you in a short amount of time you'll find that maybe a two year course 
um, that two year course maybe has four years of information. As a result of that, you're going to find that you're going to be moving at a very fast pace. As soon as you start the course, six months later, it's already June, went like that. You don't know, you don't know how it actually happened, but you ended up like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually teach yourself to learn fast. You gotta apply the knowledge that they teach you. Then unschool yourself from the knowledge that you know, applying the eating meat and throwing bones. Then you'll see that your learning will increase and you will learn much faster. And what's gonna happen is it's exponential. So um, for your first test, you might be learning at a specific pace. For your second test, you'll be learning at a faster pace. So your brain will start to adjust and you'll see that your learning will start to speed up. The other part that actually might trip you up as well is procrastination. So a lot of the times what I find with students, especially in my class, I'm having a module or whatever, and I will teach the actual module. And I can see that this student has school habits. He'll go home or she'll go home and that's where it ends, you know? They'll, they'll go throw their bag down and that's it, you know? With higher education learning, it doesn't work that way. Also, nobody's gonna bail you out. You gotta remember that. You're not gonna get marks for effort. You gotta remember that the marks that you receive is a direct reflection of what you have learned. So, don't go home and do nothing. Don't think that if you're gonna go home and come back the next day, learn like you did in school that it's gonna work. It's not gonna work. That is a form of procrastination in higher education. You gotta go home, immerse yourself in the subject, what it is that you've learned, go through your work, get to grips with it. And then through that process, if you do that consistently, you'll see that you have a very high quality of learning and the speed at which you will learn will also improve. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this kind of content, if you're a student, if you're a learner, if you're a young entrepreneur, or you're just a young person, maybe in school, trying to gain a little bit more knowledge, hit the subscribe button below and also hit the notification bell so you can get notified of any new content that we release. And also, if for instance, you have some question in your mind, uh, anything that's got to do with school, university, learning, studying, anything that's got to do with funding or entrepreneurship, especially in the context of South Africa, please just drop a comment below and I can see if I can make a video like this answering your question. And also, please check out all of our other videos as well. Till next time, I'll see you soon.